Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over a thousand posts, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster and an entire line of medical kits and supplies. Today, we're going to talk about how to treat animal bites in general. There are defensive or warning animal bites, and then there are animal attacks where the victim is knocked down by a substantially sized adversary, bitten repeatedly, and in some cases, injured by their claws. I think we did a bear encounter video, so make sure you check that out. Thankfully, these are few and far between, but those injured may have multiple bleeding lacerations and significant soft tissue damage. Major injuries should be treated as you would any trauma. Abolish the threat to the victim and yourself. Large mammals like bears, they may return for round two, so leave the area if at all possible. If a bite wound is severe and actively bleeding, place a dressing or cloth barrier on it immediately and apply direct pressure, preferably with gloved hands. If the first barrier becomes saturated, you pack fresh ones right on top of the first. Now, if the bleeding is bright red and spurting from the site, a better first step is to apply a tourniquet. Some of the most popular include the cat, the soft tea, and the swat, for which you'll find videos on this channel. Having a good supply of sterile bandages as well as hemostatic dressings, quick clot, cellox, or chitosam would also be helpful for hemorrhage control and to protect the wound. If you use one of these special blood clotting products, remove the saturated bandages you had on there first and pack the hemostatic dressing directly at the point of bleeding. Cover with a pressure dressing like the Israeli battle dressing, also known as the emergency bandage in the United States. In most small mammal bites, the marks left may seem insignificant. Any puncture of the skin, however, is something to worry about. Skin is the body's armor. Any breach leaves the victim open to infection. Any person who has been bitten by an animal should, well, seek medical care by qualified professionals if at all possible, especially if the skin's broken. Control bleeding. Clean the wound thoroughly with soap and water for several minutes. This should be done even if the skin is intact, by the way. It's important to wash off any oral bacteria that was deposited there by the animal. You want to use an antiseptic to decrease the chance of infection, betadine or BZK. Those are just two of many reasonable choices. You want to remove any rings or bracelets in a bite wound, especially if it's to the hand. If swelling occurs, it may be very difficult to remove afterwards. You want to use an ice pack to decrease swelling, bruising, and pain. You want to apply some antibiotic ointment to the area and be sure to watch for signs of wound infection. These may include redness, swelling, or oozing. The site may feel unusually warm to the touch. Warm, moist compresses to the area will help an infected wound that's producing pus to drain out. You want to frequently clean and cover a healing bite wound. Give medications such as ibuprofen or acetaminophen to treat pain at the wound site. Avoid aspirin for pain in children under the age of 16, however, due to the risk of Ray's syndrome, a potentially fatal illness. If the bite has severed a body part, wash it with clean water. Wrap it in a sterile dressing and then store in ice to transport with the victim to advanced medical care if it's available. A severed finger or ear might actually be surgically reattached. Children who suffer animal bites may become traumatized by the experience psychologically and benefit from counseling. They should always be informed about the risk of animal bites and taught to avoid stray dogs, cats, and wild animals. Never leave a small child unattended around animals. Without an able-bodied person to intervene, the outcome may be tragic. In general, low-risk wounds do not require prophylactic antibiotics other than, say, maybe triple antibiotic cream after a thorough cleaning. However, therapy is required for high-risk wounds like deep cat bites, bites to the hand, major crush injuries, delayed presentation if they've been out for a while before you get to see it, or poor general health. People that have weakened immune systems and injuries that penetrate bones or joints should also get antibiotics. Prophylactic antibiotics may be given for about three to five days, but if the wound is infected on arrival, a course of 10 full days or longer is recommended. You'll see a number of opinions on which antibiotic, though. The first line oral therapy is amoxicillin clavulanate, although some say amoxicillin alone, fish mox, is sufficient for prevention. Other options for animal bites include combinations of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim, also known as fish sulfa, plus clindamycin, fish sin, or metronidazole, fish zole. Other options are penicillin, fish pen, plus fish sin, or fish zole, and amoxicillin, fish mox, plus 
fish zen or fish zol. Normally, tetanus booster shots are given to adults about every 10 years. In the case of bite wounds, an extra injection is often recommended. It's important to remember the humans are animals too. Approximately 10 to 15% of human bites become infected due to the fact that there are over 100 million bacteria per milliliter in human saliva. Treat as you would any contaminated wound. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for Begin watching. your journey to medical preparedness with the Survival Medicine Handbook, the essential guide for when medical help is not on the way. Now in its 700 page third edition, plus our new book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in austere settings. And last but not least, by checking out Nurse Amy's medical kits and individual supplies at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.